So a lot of new engineers have asked me where do they want to get started and how can they get better at their current job after they've gotten hired? What area should they focus on? And today I'm going to talk a little bit about that and answer those questions. The number one thing is just be a sponge. Learn everything you can in your domain, in your problem space, learn all the different technology stack things, learn how your software is deployed, learn how everything works together. <laughs> like, it, I don't know that it needs to be said, but, but maybe it does. Learn all of those interconnected pieces, how the database works, how you write an SQL query. If you're doing like a microservices architecture, then how are they all connected and how can you stand up each one? Learning those things is super critical, but really the thing that I see people get the most bang for their buck in is to just get better at their tools. So a lot of newer engineers are very used to going around and uh, like I have IntelliJ here right now, but you go in and you like, you look for, you know, something in your repository whenever you have something checked out and you end up like clicking around and you waste a lot of time. If you're pair programming with somebody, then they're having to watch and, and wait for you to open a file instead of doing something like, all right, I wanna open up the like warehouse repository thing. So I hit that and I can open it up right away. So learning a lot of these different keyboard shortcuts will make you faster. It'll help you to understand where things are located. Like in uh, IntelliJ here, you can see the breadcrumbs. So like the, in this example, it's just like a toy app that I have for doing some like test driven development exercises. You have, you know, under your source main, all the package stuff and like this is a repository. If I click, you know, into a different spot, then it's gonna update that and show me where my integration test is. Learning how to navigate well across the repo will reduce the amount of time that you're spending in your brain on like, okay, where where do I click? Where do I need to navigate? You don't have to remember this whole file structure where you can do command shift O and you open up and this will show you files and then you can just you know, find it, do like a fuzzy match to find it. A way to configure your keyboard shortcuts is you hit command comma, and it'll bring up this window. And then you can say, what are, what is my key map? And in here you can see I'm using my own custom copy. And the one I really like to use is here. I'll link this into the description. Um, but this is like, you know, from, from the company Pivotal who got, got acquired by VMware, who then got acquired. Really like these IDE preferences, and you just need to bring in this IntelliJ key map, and it'll give you some really cool stuff. Bring that in, you can bring in your own, and then modify it however you want. If you do Command Shift A, then this brings up your actions menu, and you can do a whole lot of different stuff. So like, let's say I want to, you know, what we just had there, like split the window to the right. And so it's going to do that split for you instead of you having to like click it and like drag it around. Sometimes you need to do that if it's like some kind of custom configuration, but the better you can do it with just your keyboard, then the faster you're going to be. Another thing that is nice to have, you do command F and you search for, you know, whatever instance is in here. Another way to do this is using Control G. Now, this was like a newer feature back in the day, and this lets you find all the instances of it and do multi cursor mode. So, if you select them all, you just hit Control G a bunch of times and it'll select all of them. And then, using so I'm on a Mac, uh, using option, you can go by word and like the right arrow key, and you can do command to go forward and backward on different lines and then if you hold uh, option as well you can do option up and highlight progressively more information lots of good multi-cursor options here so like if i needed to modify both of these i select that and then Control g and i can modify both of them at the same time instead of clicking highlighting typing clicking highlighting typing so the faster you can get at navigating with your keyboard then the better you will be at quickly going through and getting things out of your head into the editor. Overall, you're really just trying to reduce clicking around. The only exception to that is clicking the like and subscribe button. So we're almost at 100 subscribers, so let's change that. I'll have my editor put that in the top section so that we can see where we're at. I'm Antonio, I do the editing.
So we've covered opening files and doing multi-cursor stuff. And now let's check into moving lines. So if you want to copy something, you can do a cut, command X will do a cut. And then you go down and you can paste it. Another way to do this is option shift and the up and down arrow keys. And then you just move lines to where you need to. Knowing again, all these different keyboard shortcuts gets you faster and you can revert lines and you can change things within the editor without having to reach for your mouse and do multiple clicks or multiple keystrokes. One of the things that's really nice in IntelliJ is some of this refactoring. So like if I wanted to extract maybe this stuff into its own function, I could do control T and this will bring up all the different refactoring options I have, which could be extract like a subclass or an interface. I really want to do a function though. How do we do it? There we go. So I can say function, call it ASDF and it pulls it out and does all that for me. The nice thing about this too, is if there's anything that needs to be sent in, so let's do this a different way. So I'll highlight these two, close that window, refactor using again, control T and let's do function. And you can see, well, I expected it to do the connection there. Let's try, oh, okay. Let's just do this one line. This should give us a better option here. Function. Now you can see it's smart enough to know that connection needs to be passed in. So if I did ASDF and hit okay, then I have that here with the connection already passed in and it's passed in here as well. So make use of that to do your refactorings. You can also run tests in here. So if I, you know, I'm in Kotlin here, just as an example, I could do control shift R and that's gonna run the test wherever my cursor is on the left. And then if I do like an option tab, then I can, wherever my cursor is, there we go. Uh, option tab will go, you know, wherever it needs to. So option tab will go over here. I'm in this window. And then if I do option tab again, then I'll go into this bottom section, option tab, I can go over here. But you can navigate all around only using your keyboard. You don't have to go and click into one window, click into another window and see how things are, are running or make changes. It's taken me a bunch of years to get to this point. So, you know, keep practicing, uh, take just like a small set of keyboard shortcuts you wanna learn. I would start with opening files and navigating around different files first. If you do command one, uh, you can see like how to navigate around in files. Or if you do command shift O, then you can open up files this way. Start with a small subset, use that to get better. Another way is to pair program with others. There's gonna be more experienced people on the team. If you can pair program with them, you're gonna learn all their tips and tricks instead of having to learn them yourself over the course of many years. That will accelerate your learning. So use that as an opportunity and a tool if you're able to. So recently I have been watching a lot of the Primogen, uh, love his content and love his energy and stuff. And I really want to get better at using Vim shortcuts in IntelliJ. So that's going to be something I'm working on through the rest of this year. I know Vim, but I don't really use it in a lot of IntelliJ. We'll see, you know, how, how my experience shakes out, but that is something that, you know, me personally, I'm going to start working on and learning. Just a reminder, if you haven't liked and subscribed, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.